today is <coughs> Orla Yud Dalid the Ear uh, Pesach Shani. Uh, this is Sheer Kali with Rav Gaffney on Parshas Amar. Chapter twenty-three. Well, since we're in the middle of the uh, the May uh, Sphere, the days of the counting of the Oima, and uh, the Duke that comes into our hands in the Parsha, in the Parsha Samoyadim, uh, in the second half of the Parsha Samoya. And therefore, it seems to be a, a mitzvah of all the yodchal tach mitzeno, as the Gemara says. And therefore, it seems that it was a good inner we be um, basic in the mitzvah of Sphilos Oimer. So we see that the Oimer <coughs> is the name for a korban <coughs> which was bought in the base of Mikdash. Uh, well, the actual Oimer itself wasn't a korban. But it was a thing that was portly, um, the Hanofa, it was a mincha, was portly Hanofa to uh, look for your heaving offering in front of the Mispeach of Hulu. But it was accompanied also by uh, um, uh, other Kobanes, <coughs> is and that's called uh, the union of uh, Oimer. And Rashi tells us that why was it called Oimer, because that's the name that we find in the Torah for a certain weight, a series of A for a certain volume of um, any given material, uh, which is called an, a series of A for, when it comes to oats or to uh, certain forms of uh, uh, tavua, of crops, then it's called oime, uh, with the eye. And so the fascinating thing is that we see that uh, the counting that the Torah tells us that we must undertake is called Sfirat Ha Oimel. And really, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't sort of count the Oimel. I mean, uh, the Oimel was just a cult that was bought at one moment uh, in the Azorah and the Blifnea Mispeya in the Beis Amikdos. And you know, we have to say that the, the Russian Sfirat Ha Oimel that the word Oimer is given like a, 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 a special noting of a starting point. If you start at the moment, or immediately following, well, it's not even immediately following, because the Oimer is only brought by, by day. And the Ketsura, the cutting of the Oimer, was by night. And so we begin counting from, uh, from by night. Because there's another uh, mitzvah which occurs in the sphere of Oimer itself. And that's a very uh, interesting uh, prat that uh, it's much in a certain place that maybe that could even be Dorisa, even that he had some spirit itself was only Midra, Midra. And, and that is that the, the days have to be full days, they have to be three boys, they have to be perfect or, uh, or full uh, days. And therefore we begin counting uh, in, in the night time, Davke, and we begin counting from the night time uh, and the first moment of the night time in which they actually cut the oimer uh, and brought eventually by day they brought the actual um, prepared uh, mincha into the besa mm-hmm. I mean, so the, the, besa, the, the, the actual offering of the oimer was only by day and we, either we begin counting it by night so we see then that it's not really from the moment of the bringing of the oimer that we count but it's from the moment of the cutting of the oimer and the preparing of the oimer, and even more exactly, even a few minutes or hours before that, because they can't immediately, yeah, it becomes uh, erev, uh, they can't start cutting the uh, the oimer. There must be some little break in time till they get organized, even though, as the Mishnah tells us in the, se- in the sector of Menachis, it's brought down that they used to go out especially and wait outside. Uh, in the uh, mountains or the areas around Yerushalayim where the uh, the oats grew 
uh, in order that they should be able to cut the omen. Immediately the night came in uh, on the first day after Pesach. In other words, the first moitzi uh, yont of Rishon. Shall Pesach, uh, that's when they have to cut the, the omen. And people went out and they waited specially uh, on the uh, how do you call it, on the um, area where it was possible to go. And it's at the Tchum. Uh, and everything that were all prepared as much as was possible, I'll be, uh, didn't tell to do on Yonta. So as soon as it got dark, they started moving out into the, out into the field. And that's when we count the Oima. So we see then that the, uh, the emphasis that we count, uh, the Oima, even though we actually count the Oima, uh, the emphasis that we count, uh, the Oima, um, is a very special one. We don't really count from the moment of bringing of the oim, as we just pointed out, but for the, from the preparation of it. And so, therefore, uh, it's of some notice that it's called Sfiras Ha Oima and Lachera. We could have said that we start on the first Yontov, or the first day of Cholam After Pesach, we could use some other name uh, for the starting point, or we didn't need to use the starting point at all. We could have just said Sfira or given any other name, but we see that the name Al Pitoira Bukhala Makaim is Dafki Sfiras Ho Sfiras Hoima. However, comes along the Pasik after telling us how we should offer the uh, the um, the uh, the actual Oima in the uh, in the Azora in, uh, in front of the Mizbayak and the Korban that was brought together with the uh, uh, Oima and then Having told us all the details of that, uh, then it goes on to say, Uspatem Lochem in Pesach Tesvav, and you must count for yourselves, Mimocharos HaShabos, from the day after the Yontav. Uh, the word Shabbos here uh, very unusually refers to uh, Yontav, as Rashi immediately writes, Mimocharos HaShabos, says Rashi Mimocharos Yontav, meaning the first day of Cholomor. We begin counting only on the Moitsoi Yonta Rishoin Yel Pesach. And so this produced a, quite a big uh, Sophic in Kutzlorit, where they have two days and they keep a second day in So they start counting from uh, the Moit Yont of Rishon, or maybe they should put off their spirit another day, etc. <coughs> As one on the famous Shaiva, when they get to that of the Dominican Roy of Kehilis, Israel is nonetheless to count, uh, start counting. And the Oima Karogil, even though it's still Yontov, uh, according to the Sveika de Yoma of Yontov Shani Shogoli. And it's a big question what sort of a, a minhag is it, whether you count immediately uh, after Mariv in the normal way, count the whole Yemea Spira, or there's a lot of uh, um, uh, great Kehillas uh, being as well that they count only after they've done the Leila. The whole Laila Seder, the whole because they want to make a difference and they want to show that it's not Amish. <coughs> Karogil, it's a, a, a clash between the Rabbonin and, uh, and uh, another Indian in Rabbonin, or according to the Rambam, another Indian in Daraisa. But the whole big Shaila had he count the aim on the, on the second, on the first night of the second Yontub show, Pesa. However, by us here in Eretz Israel, we keep only one day and we go according to everything Pashtas, it's written in the Torah, so we don't have any, any problem. And therefore we keep it in a simple term, so we count Mimocharas HaShabos from, now we might mention later why is it called Shabbos if we really mean Yontav. And that's unusual in the Torah for the Torah to call a Chag, a Yontav, to call it Shabbos. That means Mimocharas Yontav Rishon Shel Pesach. Why is Called Chavez. So there's a big argument <coughs> in the Gemara Masekta Menachis, as well known, uh, that the Tadukim, this is one of the things that the, um, the disbelievers, how they call them, the, uh, uh, the, what they call the Tadukim, the Sadducees or something, one in the Tlan Chesus, was Mirutim, the, uh, the Tadukim, that they didn't believe in uh, Teresh Balpeh, they didn't believe in the Rabbanon. But well, they said that it meant Mimachas HaShabbos, that it meant from you have to wait till Shabbos of Cholomoy, then you start counting. And so the Chachomim uh, had the Kabbalah that it wasn't true, that it really meant Yont of Rishon. So basically there was a whole big uh, discussion in the Gemara over there, how the Chachomim argued with the Tzadukim. You guys are not familiar with the whole, with the whole big uh, 
Ariches uh, uh, discussion and uh, appeal is uh, the Rishonim of Achreidim. It's a, a famous sugya over there. However, we have a Kabbalah for now, uh, Rabbi Seinu, that it means uh, uh, immediately after Yom Tov Rishon, even though we call Shabbat. Mi Yom Haviachem Es Eima Hatnuva. From the day that you bring the uh, uh, heave offering of the Eima. So the Tarukim said it didn't mean that, it meant something else. Anyway, in simple terms, it means from that day that you bought the Oima, Sheva Shabbase Tmimois Tiyeno. That they have to be seven perfect and complete weeks. Tiyeno they shall be. So we see here, here again another usage of the word Shabbos that the, the week, a, a group of seven days, and a unit of a week is called by the Torah Shabbat. Once again, an unusual usage of the word Shabbos, because normally Shabbos refers to the seventh day. And here we see that it refers to a group of seven days, and that's called Shabbos. So therefore you have to count seven uh, times, the seven, uh, you have to count seven weeks, and they have to be Tamimites. They have to be perfect or complete. That's why we said you have to count from the evening, because uh, the Gemara tells us that how can you say a day is complete only if you count it right from the first moment that it comes, mm-hmm. that it comes in. And therefore, as an a, a union, Loiraisi Belavavich Makpidim al Zekokacha, but there is a union. Al Pialocha, not to just come, uh, put off the sphere once it gets dark. You should um, count the sphere of Buzriz as Haki of Shodiyas. So, you have a Kasha Yim Kem, what do we do sitting here learning a Shia? Uh, we have to say that that will cause a, a, a tremendous reasons in the Indian event, whose Fatim Lo Lochem. Well, I don't know if anybody uh, got the Kasha here so they didn't need to get the Torah, so whether they just uh, uh, obstinately want to show that they don't understand any jokes or here. Anyway, which is good, I, I must say that uh, in the middle of the learning of a, of a, of a Shia, uh, I would um, even be encouraged by that. So therefore, uh, the, the, the Pasuk tells us there has to be Sheva Shabbosi to me ways, and me mochas hashabos hashviyas until the day after the completion of the seventh week, Tishbu Chamishim Yoyim. Then you must count 50 uh, days, and of course immediately you have the kasha. That if you count seven weeks, and you count up to the the, the 50th day, then you only count 49 days. You don't count 50. 50. So we see that Rashi deals with that. And Rashi immediately touches the pasuk in a way that it will come out that you really only count 49, but you still count as it were 50. And once again, that's based on that famous sukkah with the Menachos. But the Gemara deals with that question t- uh, the famous taste that's over there. Uh, <coughs> however, that's not what we're <laughs> that's not what we're principally concerned about in this class. But it is an interesting question. And seeing as I do that everybody's full of enthusiasm, uh, then I thought it's interesting to m- mention that as well. So Admi Mahus Hashavis Ashvis Tisbruk Mishim Yaim, the Hikraf Tem Mincha Khadoshala. Lashem, you bring a new mincha this time, and that is the mincha of the shtei halechem, which is bought on shvuit. But we won't go into all details of what is the shtei halechem, but they were from common stuff here, they were from lechem mamis, which is very unusual, and they were brought into the, and they were also he offered in front of the Mizbeah, uh, that was one of the things that was offered specially on the Yontav of, of shvuit. So we see that the Yontav of Shavuos comes out immediately following the completion of the counting of the Sphira. Now you count 49 days, and immediately the 49th day, Le'achri Mitzvah, becomes Shavuot. <clears throat> so here we see an interesting question, or interesting, not a question, but a fact in the Torah. This is one Yontav which we actually, as it were, we determine when that Yontav is going to is going to be. And when I say we, well, that means that Aliyidin, every Yid, uh, together with everybody together, 
counts the sphere. There's no such thing as you're relying on the sphere from somebody or from somebody else. You have to count the sphere biatmukhov, which is different than all the other spheres which are mentioned in the in the Torah. The, the other spheres of the counting the Shmitas and the and, and the and the Yoivals, well that's counted by the Bezdin. And the other spheres when I get to Hilchas Nida, we count but also not necessarily they like counted in the way that we count the sphere. Arinian or Zor, for example, he has to count uh, seven days. But we don't find Arinian like this, where everybody counts uh, individually uh, the, the the number, and he makes a blessing on it. He makes a bracha, and that bracha we preserve, even though. All the Paiskim and Paskim, except for the Rambam, that nowadays the sphere is only Midara, Midara Boran, since it's Tolu in Korban Ha Oima, as we pointed out, and the Korban Ha Oima is not, not there in the base of English, Berega is there, or hopefully Berega Ha Boli Akharov, it will be, is a Baalko Pan Kowe, that that Rega didn't actually be Mishkale, then it's only Midara Bona. And yet, nonetheless, we make her. A bracha with the whole pomp and splendor of a bracha on the spirit. So we count then, and immediately at the end of our counting becomes a ayonta, becomes shvui. So that itself asks a very fascinating question: How can you have a yont of sheni shal shal goliyas on shvui? Out of the making yont of sheni shal goliyas, everybody counts the same sphere and everybody reaches shvuis. On the same day. Well, when I say everybody, not necessarily. Yeah. We got guys here from South Africa. Uh, the guys in South Africa have never heard of the, the famous little scandal. It wasn't a scandal, a famous little thing that occurred. Who's from South Africa around here? Yeah. I never heard about it. You, you, you already left out of it. If I mentioned his name, you would probably know who it was, but I'm not, I'm not going to mention <laughs> that there was uh, once a person that uh, he's a, he's a, he's actually a Lubavitcher, and he passed uh, 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 over the, the uh, how do you call it, the cover tariff, how do you call it, the date line. He passed over the date line coming from America out to South Africa during the, during the Spirit of Saima. So what happened to him? <laughs> He was okay. He got down off the plane. He was perfectly all right. <laughs> what happened to him is that you gain a day or you lose a day. I'm not sure exactly how it goes when you fly from America yeah, out to um, uh, South Africa. And I mean, you lose the spirit. You, 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 your spirit is different than what everybody else is counting because you've got a day ahead. Or you've got a day behind. Yeah, you've got a day back. So the fair... The Rebbe, in a very famous, famous, famous tour, before this guy did it, in a years before he actually did it, the Rebbe's got a very amazing, famous uh, uh, response, a tour where the Rebbe said, if you do that, then your Chagash voice will come out on a different day. In other words, that his Chagash voice was the day after, when they were keeping second day of Shavuiz, he was making the, the first day. And the Rebbe told him that's what he had to, uh, they had to do, otherwise he'd be in a serious problem. And the Rebbe passed that, and there was a big, uh, you know, how do you call it, studium in the world, and some other opponent tried to question this, and the Rebbe dismissed all of his opponents, and it remained that that would be, uh, according to the Rebbe's ruling, that that would be the din, and why? Because Shvuiz is dependent in uh, the counting of each individual year. In other words, that you make your own Shvuiz. You make your own Shvuiz. And if, uh, if you gain a day or you get out and you lose, it's something in your head and you're going to make it up. So you move ahead a day, and that's when your Shvuiz occurs a day ahead of everybody else. So this particular person, he was in a very amazing situation where he kept his first day of when they were keeping the second day, and then he kept the second day of when everybody was already had to go out of Shavuiz. Amazing thing. And from that we see that the Indian from Shavuiz is Nifal 
Al yidei the avoid of Kol Echad Vei. So the Rebbe's got a whole famous question. Once again, it's not really the concerning of the Shia, but it's a very famous uh, question. What the Rebbe said does that mean that our counting actually makes the Ontem from Shvuyes? And if we hadn't counted, then there wouldn't be any Kedusha in Shvuyes. Can we make it through our counting? Or do we, no, do we just prepare the ground and then it becomes Shvuyes? But if we didn't prepare the ground, then it couldn't become Shvuyes. But not that we actually make Shvuyes. So the Rebbe prefers the second case, as a matter of fact. And in Pneumia Sadvarium, the Taka works out that way. But however, it's very close to saying that you make your own choice. Because each and every individual has got to count from that first day after Pesach, he's got to count 49 days, and on the 50th day he has to make sure. <coughs> so the Hori would ask a question, and he would say, Oi, how come he made sure the day after? We make shvuiz. We make shvuiz on the sixth day of <coughs> Sivan. Well, that's the day that the matan of the Torah was given. The Gemara says in the of Shabbat that the Torah was given on the sixth day of, of Sivan. So Kumta, he said, if you make your Chagah shvuiz the day after, then you're not making it on the day that the Torah was given. So how can that be? So what is the answer? It doesn't really have, uh, have to do one with the other. <laughs> doesn't have to do one with the other. So you might say, wait a minute, but everybody says that Shwiz is the day of mutton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How could you imagine Shwiz without mutton Torah? Oh, yes, you can. Min ha Torah, mutton is midoy raisa. Ain't co-kesha between Shwiz and mutton. Yeah. In other words, that min uh, ha you have to count 49 days from uh, the day that you bought the oima, and then there's a day which is called Chagashav Wuiz. And the Elta Rebbe says in Shulchan Aruch, the Elta Rebbe brings it down by in uh, uh, Hilchus Pesach, right at the end, when they get to the Tfilis of Chagashav Wuiz, but the Elta Rebbe says <coughs> over there that uh, uh, we have uh, a calendar which was given to us by Hilul uh, Hanasi and all the other great Rabada uh, Ba'av and all the other great Chachamim uh, 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 that they gave us this unbelievable uh, mathematical genius which is called the Jewish calendar which keeps us going and, and balances everything out every few years and every few months it balances everything out at infinitum of of course there's no such thing as infinitum so we, the way we run our calendar and the way we function with the, the, what, what month is, is two days, uh, how to call it, uh, 30 days, and what month is only 29 days, then it always follows that if we start counting our 50 days on the day after Pesach, uh, 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 then we will always reach the 50 Day, our 50th day will always be Vav Be Sivan, and Vav Be Sivan is Matan Torah. Well, that's the way we have it now. All of his mana mikdash that they used to had credit, they used to be Makadish, Al Pi Hariyo, you know, they used to go when they saw the, the moon, and there was no organized time which is which. Is which. And if I could be the both of them would be Mole or both of them, both of them might be you're yeah, lacking maybe one both of twenty nine or both of them thirty and if that happened then both the seven would be yeah more than fifty days from uh, the moment that you bought the Oima on the day after Pesa. Which would mean that it didn't come out it wouldn't necessarily come out per cloud on the day that was really Martin. Yeah. Uh, which means that we are hoping that Mashiach will come every moment, take from Yad, Mamish, Irachibaz, when Mashiach will come and we'll go back to counting by the, immediately we'll go back to counting according to the ages that we will bring when the moon appeared, then it could be that Shuas won't come out on Vob Siva, it might come out on Zion Siva, it might come out on Hay Siva. If we see from that, and the altar of says clearly in Shulchan Aruch, the altar of points out clearly 
that in Shulchan Aruch there's no real there's no essential connection between Matan Torah and and Spiros and Chagasha uh, Now Chagasha Vuis is at the end of 50 days from the day that was uh, the day after Pesach and it doesn't matter if it happens to be Chagash, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't have to be if it's Martin Taylor or it, not me. It's him, Din, the Raiser, Ain Lehem, Plus. They're not dependent one in the, in the Adya. I, the Chavis, I ask myself the question, how do we say on Shavuish, Chag, Matan, Zman, Matan, Taylor? So, you know, that's the famous question of Morgan Avram. In Shulchan Aruch, the Morgan of Rome has a famous question. How can we say it's man matan teiro seinu? I love Tavki. It's not necessarily it's man matan teiro seinu. And even more, the other Mephoshim and the Altar point out in the Morgan of Ruha that, that when the Yint left Mitzrayim, it wasn't. Yeah, Chagash Chuyis wasn't on the 50th day from from the Ema. It was on the 51st. According to some opinions, maybe the 52nd. Oh, yeah. It'll be say the first time round, but Martin Taylor and the end of the Oma weren't necessarily to yeah. mix together. It'll be say how do we say is man matan Taylor? For now, for the Mugen of Ruham and the Alter Rebbe also brings it in Shulchan Aruch. That ain't no chanami. It's ain't no chon. But the fact, that according to our calendar, for so many. Hundreds and thousands of years, that's been our calendar, the way we have it from the great Chachomim yeah, in the time of the Gemara. And it always works out according to our calendar. Yeah, that Vav Besibon, which is the day that the Torah was given, comes out at the same when we finish counting the Eima. And therefore, we have the right to say, Sman Matan Torah, saying, Abba Lav Davke, that it has to be that way. Abba, yeah, it's not terrible if we'll say, Sman Matan Torah, saying, That's where it happens by us. That's why it's been happening for hundreds and I feel the days and the years and the Pharaoh's Ottomans man matan Torah. Welcome to this is love and dafke, but that's the way it is. Philip Floyd. It a famous way. According to that, it follows that there's a union According to that, it follows that there's a union to count the Oima immediately after the Akrova of the Korban Oima, to count the Oima 50, uh, 49 days, and then there's a Yonta. Doesn't matter what. There's a Yonta. And it asks all the unbelievable Shaila, what's the city of the, after the Oima? Just starting to count days. You know, all of a sudden, this is the first day or the second day of that. <laughs> you know, what's the Indian? But he's the Indian. It's um, my dear boy, how do we put those uh, pictures? Because it, uh, Mashiach had come in and you have to walk past the, uh, uh, the Rebbe or Melech Mashiach. All of a sudden, all these little pictures will start flying around behind the Rebbe. So you'll be gazing at it. I was really meant to be learning. Look what I did. I went and drew all these Meshuggah the pictures. All these in your they're all coming back at me now. So be so mad. Lama Tzorichet. Lama Tzorichet. Lama Tzorichet. Counting seven weeks, 49 days, get to a 50th day and you make a... You make a yonder. <laughs> so answer the question, what is the union of counting days? What on earth? Why would you and you offer up the oima and you start counting days, finish, oh. Yonder. I'm sure yonder me not to with all the dinim of a chag, all the yonim, etc. etc. And if I answer the the question, what is the union of counting days? Time. And it's well known. The famous Shaila Bizet. And the Rebbe brings it down. The Rebbe Miller Moshiach got it in one or two of the Sifes. And the Rebbe brings on that uh, Diunim of Pihalocha. But the question is, 
You can't really count. What, what, what does it help counting time? What, what sort of difference does it make if you count time? Time anyway goes by, and, and anyway the days yeah, are what they are. Normally, when a person counts something, yeah, he's looking to see if it's lacking or if it's more or whatever it is, and if it's if it's lacking, then he'll add more. If it's if it's got too much, he'll put in his pocket what he needs. It's a, 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 always there's some purpose of addition or benefit or something in there. The counting of the of the days of it in time and in day, you can't add anything into that. You can't you can't stoop a couple of days in there at the end of the trip when they don't really belong there. And, uh, and you can't say, well, I'm lacking a day, oh God, there's a day missing here. What are you going to do with a missing day? Well, maybe you can, but that, I'll put him in simple terms. You can't. So what does it help to count time? And particularly the time just goes by without you having any control. Or you have absolutely no title to that. It won't help to count. And then we get on we make a gun to store him and the and the the pilot and as far as you can make a whole little shame, you could cut your brief with a reason, with a cycle, and with a silk, and a brand, and a do it. And we count the oil, and a brocha, and a brocha with all the pomp and splendor of a brocha. What are you doing? You're just counting something that the bottom of the tears to count. It doesn't make any sense. Why would I count that? So, some of the really uh, uh, great early uh, uh, authorities. They were concerned by that question. However, we'll see that their union uh, is connected with that fact that, generally speaking, after the Chuban Habayis and the Cheshbon of the calendar, which Hil Hanasi and the others gave us, uh, then Matantara always occurs on the Yom Hamishim to our counting. That's the way it normally happens. So on that basis, they come up with some very, very amazing ideas why we count the days. Oh, but we're going to see that that doesn't answer the Itzim question, because we just pointed out the days and Chagash really don't have any yeah, essential connection, one with the uh, with the Ager. And the far comes again, the Sefer HaChinuch, what is going on at the Sefer HaChinuch, yeah, he was a, a, a Rishain from the time of the Rishainim. Uh, we, we don't really know his full name. All we know is that his first name was Aharain. <coughs> The Rabbeinu Aaron Barachino, or what his family know and exactly in which years he lived, and anything about his private life we don't know. But he was a he was an amazing authority, and he codified all the mitzvahs according to the parshiyos of the week, and he brings down the famous biurim that he gave on each of the mitzvahs. And it's one moment he suggests reasons and time him to strengthen our way and the way Hashem for the mitzvahs, even though he himself points out you can't say there's a real time for mitzvahs, but it's for our purposes, it's a very good way of looking and it helps us to elevate ourselves and to give us chayas and the commitment to the mitzvahs. So when it comes to the Indian of Sfiris says the Seifa Chinuch, a very remarkable Arika, but I'll just give you the name of the Nimrod. And he says that the whole union of Yidden is the Torah. And he says that Yidden have no Matthias in this world any different than any other piece of grass or something in the, in the creation if it weren't for the Torah. As is one on the famous statement of Rabbi Yosef, which brought in the Gemara and said to Pesachim, that he said him love high yoma one for this day, meaning Matan Torah, then come a Yosef Ikebe Bishuka. Here there are a lot of different guys called Yosef drawing around in the in the marketplace. In other words, what he meant to say he wouldn't be any different than anybody else in the in the marketplace. The famous Sikha from the Rabbi Melech Moshiach of Adar Mamsha, a pillar to Kitsikha, where the Rabbi turns the whole thing a little bit upside down. But the simple title of what we just said, Emma Melech, if it weren't for the infamat and Torah, there's no such thing as Yid. So he said the whole infamat Torah is, is that's the, yeah, the Matthias and the life of Yid. Yeah, therefore, a Yid has to every moment, you know, he has to thank the Avishter and he has to know that his whole Matthias is, is Torah. So he says that it's written in, in the Pesach over there when the Avishter told Moshe after the whole discussion, uh, where the maid Avishter told uh, Moshe, you've got to take the Yid out of Mitzrayim. And he says over there, Bahoichiacho Esaram, Mimitrayim, 
תעבדון אס האליקים על ההר הזה. So when you will take the Eden out of Mitzrayim, then they will serve me, it is a Rakim Midi Avista, Allah Harazi on this mountain. So mine of Kimita, what does he mean with that? So it comes along Rashi over there, if you look carefully, and Rashi says that the Avista was saying to Moshe that one is like dependent in the uh, the idea that the whole purpose of taking them out, Bahoy Tiacha is Amazir. Yeah, is tavdun as elokim agahar azeh, and on the contrary, the sign that you've been matzliach and taking them out of Mitzrayim, and that you carried out your shlichus that I've given you, will be when they will be serving the Avish on this mountain. Says Rashi, what did they serve the Avish on the mountain? They were makabel there. They got mountain. They got terah. So the whole Indian of going out of Mitzrayim, the whole Indian for Nitzias Mitzrayim, and. Everything can, uh, connected with Yitzhak Mitzrayim was only to bring, and the whole purpose of it is only a sign and an indication that you've carried out your Ika which is Kabbalah Satera on Mount Sinai. So the Fah says the, uh, the Seif Achinot that without the Indian for Kabbalah Satera ain't, ain't hidden, ain't clue. And the interesting thing is, that he implies, and I'm certainly going to show you he's got a good basis for implying kacha, that Moshe Rabbeinu told the Eden a long time before he took him out of Egypt about that particular fact. And that the Eden knew that the going out of Mitzrayim wasn't just a tachlis le'atzmai, even though it's a tremendous Indian, come over. But the whole Indian of the going out of Mitzrayim was to reach Martin. Torah, and that their whole Matthias was going to be Torah, and they were going to have to bring Torah to the whole world and change the whole creation, etc. etc. Et <coughs> et Edifar, the Yidden were looking forward with tremendous chukka to this time of Matthias. And Edifar, from the moment that they actually began leaving Egypt, yeah, the beginning of the day when they started leaving Egypt, the day after that they actually got out, and they were sure that they got out, <laughs> They started counting. As they start to say, Vashinuk. And they started counting. The other day. And he said, Why would they count the days? He said, Because I meant was got a tremendous chuka to get to something. And then he had he could, he counts the, the days and he counts the hours. Okay, it was, uh, you know, when is he going to be safe to this particular? When it can actually happen because, uh, similar to that? I remember say, I just hope the Balbati Shashila and the Balbati Kashia, the Rebus, you should count back to the other way. When a person is counting, yeah, out of enthusiasm and longing to get to a certain point, then he starts off with how far away it is and he sort of he, he knocks off the days and he sees how he's getting closer. He knows less days and he's getting, getting closer. And here we sort of. Yeah, we start off at nothing, we count the number of days that we're building up towards it. He said, that's a little bit, you yeah, not quite Martin with his principle. Well, he says, a fascinating thing to say for us, you know, he said, but if we would have started off at the big number first, he said, the Yudin would have had a Halisha Sadas. <laughs> a very amazing thing. He said, he can't start off with a high number first, because then the Yudin that they want very much to get there, you say, wow, it's that long off. Another seven or eight weeks, off. what do you want of us, Gaval? So then we have to sort of kill, count them you know, from one going up. And then it's easier, says the safer. I had a favor say, he says, when you get half, past halfway, then swing around. <laughs> the safer kid himself asked the shadow, when you get past halfway, you should swing around and start going from the, you know, from the big down to the small. So he says quite justifiably that, you know, since the sphere is the whole echo, echo is not a sphere on the part of the big robotic in the painting or something. So he said the ordinary is going to get confused. It's up to you. He was counting this way. All of a sudden he's going to start counting the other way. Sheba, <laughs> yeah, he's Balbo. He might become confused and he's Mispa, etc., etc. Et now be careful because there's certain people who've gone out and they haven't come back yet. Thank you, my son. to stop making noise. Imam Ella. We have those that uh, hope that those who did come back it really came back. In the fair? 
says the Sefer Hashimah, the whole thing was based on a chukka, an unbelievable chukka to get to Matan Torah, knowing that that was their whole tafkid in life. And from then on, that was going to be the Jewish people. Takan Tzarich is what he writes to the Sefer Hashimah. Oh, big leaders that they were counting on the chukka. So the interesting thing is that there's a very similar thing in the Ram. Uh, that's the uh, Rabbeinu Nisim, the famous Pirush uh, al-Arif. Uh, uh, Ran, when he was a, uh, he was a, um, he was a Rishon, and he wrote uh, the Pirush al Masekht and the Dorim, that uh, people learn nowadays instead of Rashi, even because the Pirush of Rashi on Masekht and the Dorim was, we're not sure of the validity of some of the parts of it. So therefore, people on the Ran, and not uh, not the Rashi. The Ran, right at the end of Masekht and the Dorim, right at the end of the Rif. On the sector, on the sector of Pesachim, I'm sorry, not on the sector of Adorim, right at the end, in his Pirush al Harif, the uh, Ran brings down Otikash. He brings down the Kashi, wasn't just counting days, what, what is that, you know, what's he doing? Counting days. And he says, Medrash Agoda. Nobody knows exactly what Medrash he's referring to. He says, Medrash Agoda, and he brings a marshal to a man who was longing to get there. He doesn't go into all the details of the same. He says the man was longing to get to a certain day. Then he counts, you know, from his tremendous impatience to get to that day. Then he counts. He's all the time counting the days, and he doesn't even go into the shadow about you know more or less. Start with a big number, go down. He says that it's moving that way. That that's a way of showing your great enthusiasm. And then he just says, "I that was." Before Martin Torah, what's it got to do with it? So he adds that Al Yedezer, and that's understood in the Chinuch, because he's also talking before Martin Torah. I have to say, he says Al Yedezer, the hidden was Zeicher, and the Eves that gave them the mitzvah and Tzvilas of, or Imam, because they showed this unbelievable chukah, uh, therefore the Eves said, oh, you'll be able to preserve yourself with that mitzvah, the Kol Hatoirat, and that means that every year, in the sphere, you have to wake up every night with the sphere with a new enthusiasm and a new brand and a new looking forward to the union of uh, uh, Kabbalah Satera on Mount Sinai. However, that's all fine. According to the beer that we've already given, the once we already got the, the Luach and the calendar yeah, from the great Chachom in Bismarck Ashas, then we got this in and it, it, it always comes out Mount Sinai. in our we point out Lab here that it has to be that way. Yes, yeah, so that beer is a very beautiful beer. And I'm for, I mean, for sure, it's a beer. It's a beer for our pair of But it doesn't quite cover the Edson Shaila. We have that it can be that they don't necessarily have any connection. Zelaz P Din Torah. So what they're saying is only in the framework of what we know that you always end up yeah, in the Yom HaChamishim Lafia Mishpah Shalan who's on, on, uh, on Yom Matan Torah saying. Of a Belize. You know, I mean, we have to say that there's some, uh, how do you call it, Indian, it's a hidden, some Nakuda hidden in the fact. Allah Kora Shailas, how can we count the time now? Can we count days? Or there's no days to it with the whole Indian. That there is, of course, of some Indian that you have to count the days. And that the, the whole period from Pesach up to yeah, the Chag HaShavuiz, believe Chag Matantel said, Chag HaShavuiz, or there's an Indian of counting. This 49 days and ending up with a 50th. And that's both in Pirush Posha, it's both in Pshata Inyan and in Pnimisa, and in Pnimisa Dola. And we see that it's interesting that when you dive in the, on, on Musa for Shwez, you dive in your Siddha and you say the Musa and you say the Korbanis of Shwez and you bring from Asha Pinchot. In Sefer Bar Midbo, he writes all the Musafim of the Yom and Tevim. And over there, it's written, yeah, that Shvois, the Chagah Shvois, is called Shvoisei Chem. Yeah, it's not even called Biyoim Shvois, it's just called Bishvoisei Chem. On your Shvois. <laughs> yeah, our Shvois, what are the types? On the day which is Shvoisei Chem, then you have to bring a Musaf. Yeah, Azoya na, Azoya. The Taish Shvoi say Chem, your Shvoi. Isn't it, man? After you've counted these days, 
then it becomes your shvuiz. It becomes that that day is a makeup of the shvuiz that they now belong to to you. And this is a chag. I know it's a pleasure. There's also an Indian from like the Morgan Abraham says the noise of the mitzadi Indian of the doyrei. And the way we count is also an Indian from your matan tero. I will be ika Indian loy mukher liyishka. Had a fact. In order to get to that, what's it the, what's it the sod, but of a l'chayra? We have to say, like we saw the other night in our maima, when we were going to say our maima, what our maima does, it's put down the gemara. Once you learn to, it's your to, it becomes your, and so it's our maima. And we saw that the uh, the ikka in of the creation is time. The ikka in of the, which begins limitation. And which begins the splitting of, of the, the pure unity of the earth and safe and the creation, as a matter of fact, into limited entities is ma, is ta. Hoya, hoya, ve, ve, ye, ye. How do you call it? Past, present, and future. That's what begins the whole concept of edifa when we, when we uh, pray and we mention the Avis's government over the world. Then we say Hashem Moloch, Hashem Melech, Hashem Yimloch, Le'elam, Zohar, and we see that in many places we can, we we repeat that in different ifan. Hashem Moloch, Hashem Melech, Hashem Yimloch in different ways, and in in the davening in the morning we say them all to, all together, and then we repeat it and we say Hashem Melech, Le'elam, Zohar. First we say <coughs> past, present, and future, and then we say boom, future, yeah, all, always. Meaning that he's always in the present, even though he's in the past and the, yeah. uh, the future. Yeah. I, if, if I mean, a washer there in the Dafki, in the Malchus of the Abishta, we see that we want to show Hashem's Malchus, we split it into Hoya, Hebe, Yee, in other words, into present, past, and future, yeah. past, present, and, and future. But we see from that that the Ike, which limits the creation, as we said before, is time. The Ike is the infant. And the fact, the Ike governing power over the creation is time. And the thing which makes it creation in the normal sense yeah, is time. And the fact, what limits the mensch more than any other entity and any other power in the creation is time. And like we saw the other night in the show, we mentioned it briefly. The, the, a man is all the time saying, Oh, yo, so I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and this is going to be done. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and they come to say, No, <laughs> where are all the good, uh, you know, what happened to all the tremendous uh, ideas, etc., etc. And say, So, oh, you know, I just didn't find the time. <laughs> I was busy with this, I couldn't get into that, I could get somewhere else, you know. Just didn't find the time, or I didn't have any time. Was I just have any time? <laughs> Didn't have any time. I was just limited by time, and that is the door a key margiza to Adam. How do you call it? The thing that bothers him and annoys him and irritates him more than anything else that he didn't find the moment. You know, <laughs> I thought he could have found fifty such moments. <laughs> the limitation of time and the passage of time and what you might call. To use an expression, the waste of time. Rahman in the clan. But that's what this rules the whole of human and the whole of human existence. And that's what limits the man be cow. So the fact we should suggest that once a year, a duck after this man of Pesa. What is he needing from Pesa? Shabbat. I Pesa is not Shabbat. Basically, they want to. So we say, no, we have to start counting after Pesach. So I, 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 there's different, all sorts of different beauties. We give them, why do we call, in the Gemara, the Masekta Monarchs, why do we call Pesach Shabbat? So I saw from the Rabbi Vita Baticho, and he was a, he was a great Malam on, uh, on Yidin. And he was a very close and unbelievable uh, uh, colleague of the altar. Uh, the Alter Rebbe is well known, as the Alter Rebbe said, that he has the most amazing uh, feeling and love for Rebbe Levi Yitzhak However, 
He says that from Uwez, in Pesach, why is it called Shabbat? We mock us on Shabbos from the day after the Shabbos. So he says that on Shabbos, you stop the Ika, you stop from doing Molochah. What Molochah is the world of action, what we call Maisa, I'll pick it. However, he said, we see there's a higher Indian in Shabbos, that the Yerushalmi says that you should rest from speaking on Shabbos. <laughs> because the, the hell of the Abish should create the world through his speech. And over the Yerushalmi says that it's only with great difficulty that they p- permitted you to speak on Shabbat. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So Khalil will class you guys will say, well, if I can't talk on Shabbat, then I don't know what to do. So I'll slow for another few hours and I didn't talk anything on Shabbat. <laughs> <clears throat> of course, that's not the Kavana. Yeah, but the Yerushalmi says, oh, maybe you'll tell me Divri Torah. Even that is... It's, it's okay, but you know, it's sort of not not so easy to permit other states to do something. Fabu is up the altar, and look at the terror of Fabu, she do it. Because on Shabbos, she go up from Dibu into Ma, into Ma Shabbos. But the whole world functions on Shabbos in the level of what we call a, a, a spiritual union, which is beyond limitation. Ma Shabbos. And then we see a man, he can think about hundreds of things at one moment. Hashem, you hear Watson. Hashem should give you all good things. But you can think very swiftly, and you can think of a whole in on him. And, and, you know, it was a Makshavah's Lamaylam So he says, the Baditra, he says, what is the Makshavah of the whole world? What is the Makshavah of the whole world? He said, there's two things there's Torah and there's Yid. How do we know that? Rashi says right at the beginning, Boratius. Base races, Bishwil Atoyra Shinikras races, or Bishwil Yisrael Shinikoyim races. In other words, that the Yidden, they are the races, yeah? and races is Kokma, Kokma is Mach, for races. Yeah, races, Kokma, Yirat Hashem, Kokma is Makshava, and this is what tells the Rebbe Prague Bay, Kokma Makshava, are very close to the same Madreya. And if her, Lafizek, come so he said, the whole Makshova, the whole infant Shabbos, what's the Abish thinking the whole Shabbos? He's thinking all about Yidin. And Yidin are the whole infant creation, and the Shabbos is indicatory of the creation, therefore it has to be indicatory of, of Yidin. And a far Pesach, but that's the day that the Abish made Yidin into the chosen people, that's the day that everything began. And a far Pesach is called Shabbos. Well, this is the makshava of the whole creation, and the makshava of the whole creation is you. Are you? What do you, what do you want it or not? Well, I'm sure you do want it. But it's a big achrayim. And if uh, you're the center of the whole creation, uh, it's a, a, a very uh, appropriate idea for a person like the Rebbe of Adichva, what he holds for me and so much. That's what he said. And a far, a pace that's called Shabbat. In other words, a pace is the Eden from a mile of Mia, as man, as Eden from Machshova, it's Hechem from Tzman. And that's where Eden really are, and that's where Eden belong. They belong in the Abyssus Mach, Machshova. And a far comes to us that in a Prat Masuyam, a Yid, right from the very moment that he comes about, he comes about from a regga of. Of Shabbat, he becomes about, you know, even, which is Lamaila, Mia Oilam, Lamaila, Mi Gashmias, Lamaila, Mi Ruchmias, it's Lamaila, Mi Hazman, which man is the, is the most Ika of all the limitation. And if I, <coughs> I hear this told, immediately he comes about, and immediately he is being announced by the aunt of a Pesach of being the birth of his whole material, that Pesach is the birth. By the Yiddish people, he's told that he's got to start ruling over the whole creation. And the whole way to rule over the whole creation is that man has to become Shwoi Say Chem. Zman's got to become yours. Not that you are in the hands of Zman, but Zman has to become in your hand. You've got to become, they call it, a controller and a balabas over Zman. And if uh, you are immediately given a starting at that point, you're given a mitzvah that you've got to count the days. In other words, that you've got to start 
counting's man in a way that you indicate that you are a balabas on the on the time and that the time is something very precious so much so that you can count it but if his man what normally speak if you understand man in the balabas there's really no point in counting it but if you realize it's man yeah, it's your task to control and you've got to become a balabas or as man then you get into a whole new gear and you'll be looking at your day and you look at the passage of your time yeah, you know and so there's a that river brings down it that, 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 that people why do they count their money every now and then it's when the man counts his money <laughs> what's he counted for you know, he's counted it a few days ago he knows what it is and he counts it to make sure that nothing has been nothing has been lost that it's still the same as to the last penny that was when he put it in the in the safe and that's why you have to count time you've got to count time but you quite say or even the cholili you shouldn't lose a prut out of your time you shouldn't lose a prat in your man because you are the balabas al man I if you're a balabas al man then you're higher than the okri creation as it were and then you can determine even though you might say who am I oh, but you are the answer is that you are you and the Torah gave the counting of the time to each and every individual yin at kadikach that you could make another yonta when everybody else is keeping another yonta now you're not recommended that you do that the Rebbe says not to do it but if it so happened that you did then you make your own yonta by you it comes out that now it's worth Lafi, your counting of your time. And remember, he becomes a cancer palabos over the Matthias of Inyani Makila in Kedusha. He becomes a palabos of close in Yana Ainyanim Shebazer Hoilo. And therefore, he can't have any tainas. And he can't, he can't have any questions. Why should there be a mitzvah to learn Torah? Yeh imam ver? Laila. Laila, bali hefsek. That's the one Indian in all mitzvahs that doesn't have any limitations in time. Is learning Torah. How can he demand that of him? Uh, you're a palabas on your, on time. You rule over time. On the contrary, time has to come to you. Not that you have to say, oh, I'm just a victim of mine. I'm a victim of my time. If time will permit, you know, if I'll be able to, what's nice? If time will permit, if you will permit your time. And so where we find that written clearly, Mamish, be in the annals of Lubavitch and in Mufurish Yeite, yeah, from our Rebbeim, we find it in Hayom Yom. What Hayom Yom is the river, not of Shir, he's the one who compiled the, the whole thing of Hayom Yom. And it's brought down in Hayom Yom in the Yemei Asfira. It's brought down a story. The Rebbe Rashab was once making a fabring in the Yemea spirit. Beyond, somebody said to the Rebbe Rashab, uh, what he called a, a vote. He gave over a vote. And he said that he heard that the greatness of the Alta Rebbe's Chassidim was that the Alta Rebbe's Chassidim always counted. So, Alamogi Gitzelt. They were always counted. So when the Rebbe Rashab heard that, he was very, very impressed. The Rebbe Rashab liked it very much, the word. And he said that it's a tremendous hashkoka that came out in the Yemei Asfira, that this person should say such a thing. The Rebbe said that that means to say that we've got to know that you have to count your time. You've got to count. You've got to count time. Now what does it mean to count time to see, you know, what's dear and what you're going to be able to Add, like we said before, and okay, you can't add into time. Oh, yes, you can. And the Rebbe said, the Rebbe Rashab said, what does that mean? That you've got to be clear that today is adding into, yeah, today is one thing, but now it's going into a new uh, day, and that day has to be incomparably, he, he says in Yiddish, the Morgen darf sein a sakshena wieder heint. That the tomorrow has to be a lot, a lot more beautiful than the, the today. Doesn't it? That the tomorrow has to be a lot more beautiful than the today. And that, that means uh, that you have to know. 
And he has to be a hachlot brewer by every year. The, the tomorrow is going to be different. Those are well known jokes. Everybody says that. Oh, yeah, well, so it was and then the next day, everybody sees what he looks like. Uh, so we have to say that he didn't really mean it. When he said, oh, yeah, it didn't really mean it. But if you mean it with the MS, then that's a hero of the ultimate. They didn't just count in the spirit of Oima, they counted the whole time. In other words, they learned from the Yemaya spirit how you're going to act the whole year. In other words, the Yemaya spirit immediately become a year on Pesa, Makshova, the Vidichva. Become a year, you've got to realize that your tough kid is to count the time. That's your job. And then once you get to Shvois, it's yours. Shvois, Eichem. Now you've got to, go to do it all, all around the year, anytime. I feel in the middle of, as they say in the old Yiddish, a hell and midfog. A nice sort of yellow, sunny Wednesday. Yeah, you've got to be in the middle of it. Then, and you've got to be able to... Yeah, the, so it goes on the river. The river's got a, a secret which is brought down in, uh, in, uh, in the Kutte Sifes. And the river brings down over there... That that the mensch from that seeker, the Rebbe Rashab, the mensch can learn to the whole uh, all, all the days of his life, and he says, but just we take into account how the spirit works, that we see that if you miss out chas v'shonim, chas v'cholila, it's called mazur kodesh, you must not miss on a on a day chas v'shonim. But if you miss out on a day, then what happens is that we pass you can't we count the other days, but we the the din is you count them without a problem. So why is it you can't recount uh, uh, the other days? Because you're lacking in the whole, you've missed out uh, on, the, on, the, on the one day. So that means that the counting you've done up to now was good, but it, it's not fulfilling itself. So we got up to a certain point, and the days to come are lacking because you didn't have that day in the middle of them. So you've, it's both ways, you've, as it were, blown it from the past, and you've, yeah, uh, you've as it were, made the ones in the future insignificant. So the Rebbe said, well, he said come to us, that when a person thinks about the whole his life, he's not the Rebbe though. And the whole his day is just made up of a whole series of, his life, I'm sorry, it is made up of a whole series of days, then you get a whole different concept of what does it mean that's gone past another, that's gone past another day. Yeah, you're studying some very important uh, infinitesimal detail in your fingers there. If, um, if I'm ever come to us, that, uh, that if you miss on a day, as it were, in other words, you don't move a day forward, and you don't make the next day better than this day, then as it were, you're, you're impinging backwards on all the days that have gone past, and you're, as it were, causing a lacking in the days which are, uh, which are coming. It's a mind-boggling uh, content. It causes one to become very insobered. Uh, when you think about it. And then the Rebbe goes on to say that a Zoe Hido is going to get to a Shlichet. Yeah, if a mensch has a Shlichet and he's got something to do, then he's got to know that he, he and everybody has a Shlichet in the world. Everybody's got a, a tough kid that everybody was sent down in the world to, to carry something out. So the Rebbe said, if you, if you just you know, sit on your merits for one day and you don't do anything in particular, then you've blown your Cheshbon as well. Your, your Cheshbon doesn't add up. In the, in the proper and the full uh, way, and he said that's why it is in the delay of the spirit that if you miss out on a day, Kilo, you've been putting him in the hole, Inya. Well, even though, as, um, I'm not going to say this to Kilo that this thing shouldn't hear it and so on and so forth, but there was a Kabbalah in the from the great Mashpim, that even if you miss out on a day, you should nonetheless count with a prophet, but I didn't say that. So, but uh, it happens to be the case and in uh, private uh, audiences I can pass on more about it but anyway hopefully nobody will ever forget anything and so we won't ever come up to question it. but anyway part of the piece that the Rebbe draws a whole picture of the Tasfira is no geared to the close in of a mentioned life and he shlichas and he's tafkid in this he's tafkid in this world and it follows that famous question what the Adikonims, what the Chinook said why don't we start off with the number and sort of build up why don't we just start off with a big number and, and run down with great enthusiasm so it makes good sense now because everything you've done up till now is tremendously important and the Mishpah is not going to be complete 
complete unless you've unless you've done everything the way you could. Otherwise, the mist is going to be lacking somewhere. And if I, we we don't say today is the thirty adequate so, so day of the Oima. We say today is uh, so and so and so many days, so many weeks of the Oima. In other words, we keep all the days that we've counted. We don't just lose them somehow. Or not. And we say that today is so many days yeah, of the Oima. Meaning that we, can, we in our counting, we include all the days of the Oima up till now. And we don't just use an ordinal number. We don't just say, yeah, today is the 25th day of the Oima. We say today is 25 days of the Oima. Shaheem, and we, we, we divide them up into math- mathematical entities, and we say exactly how many days they are and how beautiful they are up to now we divide them into weeks and into days it's even, it makes it easy for the internet to, not to divide it into hours and minutes but they didn't really work out <laughs> but how hopefully we divide it is a simon that everything you've done up to now is a building towards where you're going, that's part of the Ike Indian, that's part of the Shlemas of the control over time and that makes it significant. And then you move into the future, but you can't miss in the middle. If you do, then you blow both from behind and into the a future. And the Rebbe goes on to say, he says that that's a hero for everybody by, by, in the whole Jewish people. He says for, for, for children and for women and for men and for everybody. We have to know how important it is the, this manas fira that that lifts a yid into a control yeah, completely and utterly over time and therefore shvuz min ha is not necessarily connected with matan toira and therefore it's called shvuzay chem it's your time, it's your shvuz you are now balabasa time and you're going to be the chosid of the altar of you're going to go out of shvuz and you're going to go into a counting of time yeah, for the rest of your life you're always going to count you're always going to be counting the time. Was that kind? Yeah, Dibri, uh, uh, I remember Melech Moshiach in, in, in how he called the uh, taste of his beer. But I get to that particular sipo of the Rebbe Rasha. <coughs> so Lefisa, it follows that we have an amazing limud in the Yemei uh, Sphira Sa'ime. And that will fit in very beautifully with what the Baal Shem Tev said, that the Alta Rebbe brings it down in the Kutti Torah. It's Fatim Lochem, it's Fatim of Eloshan Sapir, you know, how do you call it, a shining a jewel, Sapir, that you've got to light up and make beautiful Lochem, your own, in your name, how do you call it, the things which are yours, meaning the things that you do in the normal time, and in the normal way of life, you've got to make them beautiful. You've got to light them up and make them into a shining even sapir. So the, the, the point being that you, 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 if you're just under the rule of time and is chasing around like a, a sort of a, you know, a sort of a victim of your life and you didn't realize and you didn't know and you weren't aware and a hen and a hair, then you can't really make the Gashmias into a beautiful, uh, shining entity. Because the Gashmias is in charge of you. You've got to be in charge of the, of the Gashmias. You've got to be a Shoilat of Kola Inyoni. How do you become like that if you're Shoilat Allah's man? If you're in charge of the time. And therefore, I told you guys once a, a famous story that I heard from a, a, a Yidin Baneba. That um, he was a Sri Dashoya, he was a man that he got out of the, of the Holocaust, I mean, he lost his whole family. Is that he, uh, he lived in Bnei Bach and uh, as a remembrance for the family and everybody that he'd lost in the Shoya, he started off a, um, a little um, loan fund, and he called it uh, on the name of the which remembered the people who had passed in the Shoya. And um, he was a uh, he ran this little loan fund very faithfully and very with great enthusiasm. So I remember I once went uh, I once went into the get alone in my young years I tried to come back, you know, like some young lad was fishing around for a few bucks. Uh, so I used to borrow money from this one and from that one. So I went in, I saw he had a gamak and I asked him if I could uh, borrow a little bit of money and um, pay it back, pay the sham and so on and so forth. So he asked me if I was a Chabadnik, because he, he sort of took a look at me and he said, are you from Chabad? And I said, yeah. So he said, I want to tell you a story about your Rebbe. So I said, oh yeah, okay, let's have it. Mm-hmm. So he said, 
that uh, a few years before the time that I met him, he went to the to, uh, on a visit to uh, to um, New York. He didn't go on a visit to the Rebbe, was not The Rebbe was from uh, Poland. As, um, however, he had written a little book. You know, he loved her as well so much that he went like a lot of people do nowadays with buses and with beautiful uh, roads and all sorts of uh, you know signs. He used to go around to all the Mekimisa Akadoshi. You know, so in those days, it was very difficult to get to these places. You had to climb over the mountains and everything. And you had to know where you were going. So he worked on that book that a lot of you guys have bought, the Sefer Chizienes, from the Rabbeinu Chaim Batal. Well, it's written over there. And he worked out there all sorts of ways, you know, nowadays what those signs would mean. And he put a tremendous amount of effort into it. And he wrote a little book, a sort of a booklet about the Mekibus Hagadashim and Eretz Yisrael that he'd managed to work out and he felt that they were they were reliable and everything. He wrote a little bit about each one and he published it in a, a Sefer and that was like his, you know, his uh, contribution to the great continuation of the Jewish uh, Masaylas that he felt was uh, so threatened by the Shoya and everything. He felt that that was like his contribution. So when he went to the river, somebody said to him, if you're going to New York, you must uh, go in and see the Lubavitcher. No, no. You must go and see the Lubavitcher River. So he took it seriously, and he got himself in the line, and he got himself a Yechidah. He got, he got a official Yechidah with a Rebbe. So he walks into the Rebbe, and the Rebbe looks at the petic that he gave him with his name, and the Rebbe looks at the name, and then the Rebbe sort of looked up at him, and the Rebbe said, um, didn't you publish a, a small safer about the Mekayma Sakadashi in Old Sisoa? So, I mean, so a, a little safer. He didn't even know that it got as far as America. Who, who had done is that? But he couldn't. If he was just dumb for his mouth just fell open, you know, with a gape of amazement. You know, and so the the rabbi looked at him. and The rabbi said, "You know, was it his pilots?" The rabbi said to me, "This what is so effective about him." <laughs> so he said, "I said, the Lubavitcher rabbi. I've been told the Lubavitcher rabbi carries the whole world on his shoulders." And uh, you know it's just unbelievable uh, h- how he uh, manages what he does. So he says, "How did the Lubavitcher Rebbe have time to look at my little safe? You know, my little safe I didn't even know got this far. So how did the Lubavitcher Rebbe have the time to look at my safe? He, he was just, you know, he was absolute gaping with, with wonder at this amazing phenomenon. So the Rebbe looked at him, and the Rebbe said, uh, "Look, he said, it's not such a surprise." And then the Rebbe said to him that uh, by uns is makubo, uh, it's a very unusual thing, that by us it's received. In other words, that means by the Rebbe. Uh, that, I have to assume that's what the Rebbe meant. So by us is makubo, that every, um, every rega is a oil on mole, every moment is a full world, and that every hour is an eternity. That's what the Rebbe said to him. That was the last he told me. He said to me, that's what the Rebbe said. That every moment was a full hour, and every hour was an eternity. So when he heard that, you know, he just found it. He just didn't know what he was doing. So he, he sort of started to move back, you know, to move out of the room. So the Rebbe said to him, you know, who gave I said, you just come in, you know, where are you going now? And he said, well, I can't stand here. He said, if the Rebbe... If every minute of the Rebbe's time is the whole world, I, I can't take away from the Rebbe's time. So the Rebbe said, uh, uh, he said, I understand that you wanted a bracha. He said, we can at least have time to, to, to bless one the other. That's what the Rebbe said. Yeah, so. so the Rebbe gave him this amazing bracha, and the Rebbe said, he should be a mark, he owe him, and that he should have a bracha with his gemach. He told the Rebbe in the thing, he wrote three for that, his gemach. So he said to me, he said, yeah, he said, you talk to me about the river. He said, the river is la mi man. He said, it's completely beyond time. <laughs> what is that? Now, I don't remember when I heard that story. Maybe it was in the Emmaus Villa. <laughs> it could all be. <laughs> and what I said, because around about that time, I used to have a shear in a mime about Sphira Soim with a group of guys. And I remember that one time when we finished learning that mime, I went over to his house. But that's not a right of we were learning Dafkin, it could be it was only after Schwitz, it was too big to learn that mime. 
Anyway, what was it He said that the Rebbe said such a thing. That every moment, every hour is an eternity. Are we in the What sort of words it does? It must mean something. It attached to that Yid is in charge of time. And if you become in charge of time, you can use your time that it gives you more time, not that it, it limits you. That's amazing. Amazing concept. In other words, if you really become a balabas on time, then time is much peer back at back at you. And if you do it, just how precious time is, and just how wondrous this concept of of counting the time and what it can really apply imply in life, and you open up a whole new vista, you become as it were, in the world of limitation, you become unlimited. And that's an amazing Indian and Yesh Lema and a dose of Pshat was Fatem Lochem. It becomes yours. If you count time the right way, it all goes back to you. It becomes your control. Each and every, each and every individual according to how much he puts into it. And the, and the, and the, and the Rebbe, as he was an uh, Ishama Klolius, what he put everything he had into everything. For the Klolius, so, the Rebbe, he was just incomparably beyond normal limitations of time. And it can only be that way if you look at all the things that the Rebbe achieved in each day and every day. It's just unfathomable how, uh, you know, in inverted commas, a normal human being could have achieved such things. In order to just uh, 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 complete this, it's going to be very brief and everybody can be uh, uh, confident that we're not going to drag on for very much longer. But we could say that uh, tonight is the second uh, of whatever it is. In other words, it's what they call the second chance. And the free ticket of it brings in the in Hayom Yom, another Hayom Yom, uh, when I said the Rebbe brings the Fiddik Rebbe, uh, the Rebbe said that that, 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 that second, uh, what you call it, but that indicates that there's no such thing as lost. Ain't for fun. And that even though you missed out once, and you were a bit you were distant from the whole thing. You weren't into it. You were in a different way. And that was even deliberate. That's what he writes. If you look carefully in the Hayom Yom, he said, you were even deliberately like that. He said, nonetheless, there's no such thing as this kaim onisto, kaim fafalam. It's an old suggestion in Yiddish. There's never any lost cause. And he called, no such thing as lost. I mean, <laughs> and that's the finish of, of this whole union, of this whole yonder, which is called the second, uh, whatever it's called. And the whole unbelievable finish of that thing is that even though you missed out, and once a time for a yonder was gone by, then the Gemara says, Become a Mekemis, Ovazmane, Bottle Korbane. Once it's gone past, you can't bring a call for that time, but it's gone. It's no longer Shmini Atzeret, it's no longer Sukkot, it's no longer Shri Shal Pesach. You can't bring a call for Shri Shal Pesach afterwards. Except if there's a thing what the Gemara calls uh, Tashlumin. In certain Korbanes there are Tashlumin. Ovaz, eh? Ovazmane, Bottle Korbane. But, so you missed out on Pesach, you missed out on Pesach, oh, they just said, no, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, because he didn't came along and they said, we really want, we, that was I when I found it. And uh, they said, long and Nigora, why should we be different than the other peoples? We want to talk and be mamish with all of our, whole, our heart and all of our souls, we want to be Makayim. The uni for Kom Pesach. So they said, oh, yes. a second, a second, a second, uh, 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 what you call <laughs> it's already passed in time. It's already gone past. We have to say that that what the Eden shouted, and they said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Lama Nigora, why should we be different? Why should we miss out? Well, that came from the Etzim of Manevis. That was not just stam. That was a gishrei. That he called a shout that they said to Mother Rebbe describes it. The Sifa. That that was our Indian of what they wanted. You remember that? That came from the very profundity of the soul. That came from you know, the Etzim of Remember, the etzim is that part of you which it can gain control over the time. And somebody who serves with the teikif of his etzim, then he lifts himself up beyond the limitation of time. 
That's why the river, the river is a man. I mean, he was your feeder, so cold, cloudy, so he was the feeder functioning the whole time as if I was a little me. But his man, and if I didn't reach into the etzim and everything, and they said, Lo mani yorah, with a, such a believable shout, to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu said, Mmm, sorry, these guys are mummies, you know, they're a mile of me as man, and it bothers them the time. And I say, Ooh, we're so angry with the fact that there was a time and now it's not anymore. Yeah, we want to be a mile of me our time. We want to go back in time. So Moshe Rabbeinu said, Oh, you're not going I go back in time, you guys, so easy. I only heard him say, Long and he go, Ah, what does that burning power from the etzim and effort? Oh, you know, but then the angel said, Tell him, even though Moshe Rabbeinu still had to ask, he wasn't sure 100%. And then the angel said, Zichar, if that's the case, tell him, My Lamia Smile, and they want to go back and, and bring back Smile, and correct Smile, and even bring it back. Then, Give it to what? And that was the famous mitzvah of the, of, of the second uh, chance. And that's, a, that's the limit that we see in the place of Shani, uh, uh, that's an amazing Indian. And I found Hashem should help all of us. We have to realize that we're, we're counting time now also. Once the altar of the city brought that in, then it's the clo- our way to Claudia. Although it's even more now. We've got a new chukka and a new unbelievable uh, longing and a new unbelievable gaguim. What the Rebbe gave us, that's a good slave. So every you should be counting every second of Adma, Adma Sai. When is, you know, we're going to hit the Indian of the good slave, Rabbeinu Slaver. And if by the Indian from Matan Taylor, it was like that, then Allah has come. But the, uh, like we saw in our mind last night, that the Indian of, uh, of Moshe is going to be even more Kaviyogel than Matan Torah, as it were, even though Matan Torah was never be again that type of wondrous thing that Matan Torah was. But when it's connected with Chuba, with the burning desire to get to the Guru Shlema, that's even more Kaviyoho. That's twice Anoichi, Anoichi, Anoichi. Not just Anoichi Hashem Alakam. And the Father Hashem should help all of us that we all be full of that brand to get to the Guru Shlema. Careful of your head, man. <laughs> is uh, to get to the Guru Shlema and to know that it's a question of counting the minutes. I mean, the Rebbe said, the end is any, any second. So we've got to, you know, we'd like to say what Hino says. We've got to just count every second. <coughs> it doesn't matter which way you count. You want to count back to front, you want to count front to back with. But again, to the Guru Shlema, I don't think it would really uh, bother her Kodesh Paul. Oh, but now with the spirit, you've got to be Masuda. With the spirit, <laughs> with the spirit you can't stop all of a sudden counting backwards. You've got to go forwards, move forwards and forwards and forwards, and move to Martin Taylor. And long before Martin Taylor, we've got uh, like Bema coming up, and that's the Rebbe Rashab says that's Martin Taylor, Pneumus of Taylor. And so we should be safe and not even uh, without even everybody being safe. We should just be there uh, together with Moshe Tidkano, take you from the yard, Mami. Amen. Yeah.